Hi, I'm David McCree. I'm a certified public accountant and I'm going to show you a method that you can use to send documents, tax returns, letters to the IRS in a foolproof way to show that the documents were actually sent on time and they were actually received by the IRS. And I'm going to do this using certified mail and a special little cover letter. Now I'm going to show you how you can use certified mail to mail documents, tax returns to the IRS uh, in a foolproof method to prove that they actually did receive what you sent. First you start with the document that you're going to send and you'll need to determine the correct address at the IRS to mail that particular document or form. So you'll need an envelope addressed to that address uh, if it's a tax return or application of some kind, in the instructions to that return or application will be the proper address to mail it to at the IRS. Uh, if it's a penalty notice that you're responding to, the address will be contained in the penalty notice. So be sure to send it to the right place. Second thing is, you're going to need to go to the post office and you're going to need to get a Form 3811, which is this return receipt and also this other little form that accompanies it and that's the uh, certified mail receipt that proves when you mailed the form. So both of these can be picked up at the lobby of your neighborhood post office. So we'll start out with the return receipt and on the front of it you're just going to put your return address so this card can come back to you and on the other side you're going to put the proper IRS address you're going to mark that this is certified mail and then you're going to put the certified mail number right down in this spot here you can write it in or you can just peel it right off of the certified mail receipt like this and then just stick it right on there like that so then this little green form you're going to put the IRS's address here and I also recommend putting right over here and underneath where the postmark is going to be just put the name of your organization and the form and even the year number that way you can you won't um, get confused about what tax return or what communication this particular um, certified mail receipt goes to and you won't have to go look up the the number so that's the certified mail portion of it the next part is preparing a cover letter or transmittal letter and this is a, a letter to the IRS explaining what's in the envelope okay so you're gonna start out uh, with simply with with your name and address the date and the proper address to the Eternal Revenue Service. You want to say what it's about, the organization's name. Uh, if it's in response to a penalty notice, you'll want to reference that uh, particular penalty notice there. And I like to identify the organization using its employer identification number uh, if that's appropriate. And I simply say, Dear Service Center Representative, enclosed are the following items submitted on behalf of the above named organization. Then I list what's in the package. If it's a Form 990, uh, I simply write that. Uh, for instance, in this example, I say 2006 Form 990 and attachments. If there's a check in there, uh, make note of the check. Whatever is in there. Then say, please indicate that the aforementioned items were received by marking the copy of this transmittal letter as received and kindly return it to me in the self-addressed stamped envelope enclosed. Thank you very much. Signature and put your certified mail receipt number here uh, at the bottom to match what was on the little green card. Okay, so that way you can tie all these documents together. Next, the last thing you need is a self-addressed envelope. Be sure to put a stamp on it. And I always send uh, an extra copy of the transmittal letter in case the IRS wants to keep a copy for themselves. Right? 
So they'll stamp at least one of these and mail it back to me in this stamp self-addressed envelope. So what does all this accomplish? Well, first, this little certified mail receipt gets the post office's stamp right here, date stamp, and that proves the date that I mailed it. Your postage meter at your office isn't going to cut it. You need to actually go up to the postal clerk in the post office and have them actually stamp it with their uh, machine there. Then, this will come back to you uh, after the IRS gets it and stamps it the date that it was received and this will prove that they actually received the package from you. Then, well, unfortunately that doesn't prove what was in the package. So that's where the transmittal letter comes in. When that comes back to you it will be stamped received with a date on it uh, from the IRS and in it they're acknowledging that they've received everything that's in there. So in your final package to the IRS you have the document that you're or tax return that you're mailing to the IRS that goes in the envelope. Then your cover letter with stamped self-addressed envelope paper clip to it. That goes in the envelope. You're going to seal it up. Take your certified mailing forms just like this to the post office. I usually just paper clip them to the envelope like that. And there you go. Hand that to the postal clerk and probably cost you five, maybe six dollars, and you're good to go. So as you can see, if you use this method to mail documents to the IRS, you can prove when you mailed it, when the IRS received it, and exactly what the IRS received from you. I'd like to end by saying that if it's possible to file a tax return or send a document electronically, like e-filing your 1040, you should always do that because then you have electronic confirmation that the document was sent by a certain time and exactly what document was sent. And that's always the, the easiest and the, usually the least expensive way to do it. But for documents where it's not appropriate to e-file e them or it's not possible, then the method I've just explained is an excellent one.